In this video, we're going to continue learning how image formation works. Uh, we have looked at two cases of lenses, a converging lens and a diverging lens. Now we're going to look at two cases of reflectors or mirrors converging and diverging. As you can probably see from the drawing, this is a converging mirror. Notice the concave shape. Uh, and I've drawn three rays coming in. I've, I, I've again drawn a horizontal axis. I've drawn three rays coming in parallel, one down here, one up here, and then one right along that center axis. And I've also drawn their path of reflection. Again, these are gonna follow the law of reflection, no big deal, but I don't usually do a lot of analysis at the interface as long as I know this point here, which is the focal point, just like it was with a lens. This, we will define this length from the center point of this mirror to the focal point of the focal length. Now, if you have ever studied conic sections, uh, you might recognize this behavior as a parabolic reflector. You've probably seen parabolic reflectors. If you've ever watched satellite television, you've certainly used parabolic reflectors, right? There's uh, a signal coming from a satellite which bounces off some sort of concave reflector and is focused in to this point here at which sits, in, in the case of a satellite television, a receptor. That's what gets the signal. So a parabola is a particular conic section that has this aspect. In, in the mathematical form, formula, or the mathematical term for this point is the focus of the parabola. We're using it as the focal point of the light entering it. Okay, so this is a parabolic reflector. Now, as we always do, let's make some approximations. Let me tell you that this little section, this curved section, is not actually a parabola, it's a little section of a sphere. If I told you that, would you be able to look at that and go, no, 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 that's a parabola? <laughs> Probably not. If you look at a much larger section of a parabola, let me uh, get a different sheet because I'm gonna use this one still. If you look at a, if you zoom out of the parabola, right, it looks like something like this. And that is definitely not a sphere, but if I focus in right there, if I zoom out on that, can you really tell that that's a parabola and not a sphere? I mean, at point of fact, I don't know how I've drawn it. I'm not, I'm not an artist. Uh, but if I, if this is a part of a parabola, can you look at just this section and say, oh, it's clearly not spherical? I, I can't, right? The, the point is, uh, grinding a mirror into the shape of a parabola, really not easy to do, really expensive. What we normally do with reflectors like this is we allow them to not be parabolic on the inside, we allow them to be spherical. That is to say, there is a radius of curvature of this spherical section. Now when I do that, what I lose, if this is actually a sphere, this, these, these light rays that are uh, reflecting off this don't actually converge to a point. They kind of converge to a little region. They don't actually converge. There's a little region here where they cross. But as long as my curvature is not too extreme, and as long as my application doesn't really care about if it's, uh, as long as the region of convergence is very small, I can treat it like a point. And what that gets for me economically is I can grind a spherical mirror really easily, uh, much cheap, much more cheaply than a parabolic mirror. And I, I, I basically retain this focal nature with a good approximation. So I'm going to say that this is, we're going to treat spherical mirrors instead of parabolic mirrors. If you really want to be accurate, you're doing some high intensity optics, you will need a parabola. For most real world applications, we can get by with a small section of a sphere. If I make that uh, assumption, then what I can, what, then there come, turns out to be a really nice relationship between the focal length and the radius of the sphere. The radius of the sphere, let me move that over, is something like right here. The radius of curvature, the focal length is here. There's a really simple relationship if this is actually a spherical mirror, not a, uh, not a parabola, which is that the focal length is equal to half the radius. So this is the, the case we're gonna treat. There are parabolic, actual parabolic reflectors. Uh, the equations for parabolas 
give you the focus in terms of other things. There's no radius of a parabola. But this is the approximation that we're going to make. All right, so we have the focal length. Notice that these things converge to a point. I'm not going to just say that there's a focal point, not a focal region. I'm, I'm making the approximation. So I have a focal length, the, the surface of the mirror to the focal point. And notice that these rays are all converging on that point. So we call this a converging mirror. We have seen cases of converging lenses, right? What we're going to find out is these actually work pretty much the same, uh, with the, of course, the exception that the light is not passing through the mirror like it does in a lens. It's bouncing off of the mirror. Okay, let's do a case. I should also point out we have the same set of equations as we developed for lenses. That is, we're going to use the thin lens equation, even though uh, it's not. this is not a lens. If you want to call it the mirror equation, you're welcome to, but it turns out to be the same equation. All right, so there's my axis. We'll say that my focal point is here. And let's put in an object here, farther away from the mirror than the focal point. Let's just put in some numbers now so I don't forget. I shouldn't see that. Focal length will let be 10 centimeters. Uh, distance to the object, oh, I'll use lowercase d. Distance to the object will let be 15 centimeters. All right, so first, ray tracing. So like I said in the last two videos, if you're in my class, look on look in Canvas. You have some ray tracing uh, rules for you. If you are not, here's what they are. Let's let the first ray come in. I'm, I'm still going to pick out the tip of this arrow to let my light rays emanate from there. So they're going to come in here. And we know what's going to happen to this one, right? It's how we develop the idea of a focal point in the first place. This one is going to be reflected back through the focal point. Okay. Now I'm going to let a ray come in through the focal point. And let's ask ourselves, what is that going to do? Well, if the ray was coming in parallel from down here, it would be reflected back through the focal point. It's kind of what we see here. Just trace it backwards. That means that this ray that strikes the mirror by passing through the focal point is going to be reflected parallel to the horizontal axis. And you can already see I'm getting some convergence here. Now, I could be done. I could go ahead and draw my image here. In fact, I will. These came from the tip of the arrow. So let's draw my image there. There is one more ray. You only need two to do a ray tracing, but there is one more ray, ray you could draw. Uh, a ray that, is, that strikes the center point of this mirror is just reflected at the same angle in accordance with the law of reflection. So see if I can get that anywhere close. Uh, maybe we'll see. That looks right. Ah, I'm doing good today. You, do, you teach this class enough and you get pretty good at ray drawings. Uh, now I had to make it. Uh, that angle is not quite the same, but you know, give me a break. I'm doing this with uh, large expo markers. So yeah, the idea is these rays all come in. You only need two to do a good ray tracing. I did three to show you what are, what's available. I do this and I get this image. All right. So that's the qualitative behavior. Let's run the math and get the quantitative, make sure that it lines up. Make sure that we, to within a good approximation, this behavior is the same behavior as I see from the mathematics. Okay, so same equation. I've got di is equal to uh, do times f, or fdo, however you want to say it. What's important is the denominator is do minus f, right? <laughs> Subtraction is not commutative, hopefully, hopefully we know that. So this order matters, this order doesn't. I think in the last videos I was writing you have to go, no big deal. What do I get from that in this situation? Well, I get 10 centimeters, that's my F, times 15 centimeters, that's my DO, so I flipped those, sorry. Over DO minus F, that's 15 centimeters minus five centimeters. So we've seen this before, I get 150 square centimeters over, uh, it looks like, Oh, I wrote five. I should have written 10. I did the math in my head. Over five centimeters. Lose one of the units. I get 30 centimeters. Okay, let's just make sure this uh, lines up at least conceptually to within a good approximation. 
This is larger than the distance to the object. Check. Does it look like it's twice as, lar as, as far? No. But again, I'm looking for quantitative, no, I'm looking for qualitative behavior. Quantitative would come out if I were, if I had a, a, an actual diagram of an actual spherical lens here and I'd measured these ratios really carefully and used a straight edge. And I, if I were to be doing problems like this, just, you know, f to turn in, I would actually do that. But it's really hard to see those diagrams here. So we're doing, we're looking conceptually and uh, qualitatively. Qualitatively, this matches up beautifully. Distance to the image is 30 centimeters. Let's check the magnification. Minus di over do. I get minus di is 30 centimeters over do, which is 15 centimeters. I get minus 2, which means it's, the negative tells me it's inverted. Check. The 2 tells me it's bigger. Mm, Check-ish, right? <laughs> it look, it, qualitatively, we're good. Does not look twice as big. But uh, the mathematics matches up qualitatively with, which, with what I've got. So I feel good about that. Now, I got a distance to the image that's positive. Remember for a lens, a positive image distance told you that the image was on the opposite side of the lens from the object. But this is a mirror. They work differently. They reflect, not transmit. So, a positive image distance tells you that the image is on the same side as the object for mirrors. That's backwards than what it is for lenses. But the other rules are still the same. Is this a real image or a virtual image? Well, uh, are there actually light rays propagating in this region at that image? And the answer is yes. This has to be a real projectable image. Okay, so the, the sign of the image distance is different now, but every other sign is correct. The, the negative sign still tells you, and the magnification still tells you that this is inverted. And we are still going to see a negative focal length for the diverging case, but we've got one more case to do for the converging here. Okay, let's do that. So same as we did with lenses, let me give you another converging mirror. Do it here. I'll continue this on out. All right, now my focal point will be here. Put my object now closer to the lens than my focal point. We'll put in the numbers in just a second. Uh, now, let's run through our ray tracing rules. So the first rule is still okay. A ray coming in parallel is going to be reflected such that it passes through the focal point. Now, the next rule that I used was a ray striking the mirror by passing through the focal point. But just like we saw with lenses, that doesn't work here. Because I've moved the object closer to the mirror than the focal point, any ray that emanates here that passes through the focal point doesn't get to the mirror. So I can't use that rule. But I can use the other rule, which says that any ray incident upon the center, that's not straight, reflects at about, not about, at exactly the same angle. All right. A little hard to see over here. But I think I probably should have made this angle a little bit bigger. But just like we saw with lenses, these are never going to converge. They're actually getting farther and farther away. Yeah, it looks like I should have made that angle a little bit bigger, maybe like that. So they're going to diverge on this side. I'm going to follow the same procedure I did with lenses. Let's trace these backwards. I am now in firmly in the virtual ray region. Light is actually not propagating here. In the case of the lens, I said light was propagating, but not these rays. In this case, there's no light from over here propagating here. This is a mirror. It doesn't get through. So these have to be virtual rays, which means I'm going to form a virtual image. Notice the point of convergence here from the tip of the arrow tells me that my object looks like, ah, my image looks like this. All right. All right, so just like with the others, I've got a distance to the image, I've got a distance to the object. 
let's, uh, I can already write down that the image is virtual, which means it's not projectable. So let's run the math, make sure I got everything okay. Let's let the focal length here be minus 15, not minus, not minus, not minus, 15 centimeters, sorry. 15 centimeters, let me just rewrite that. 15 centimeters. We'll let the distance to the object be 10 centimeters closer than my focal point. See what my distance to the image. All right, I've got di is equal to f do over do minus f is equal to 15 centimeters. If you're wondering how I had this memorized, it's because I write it down about 30 times when I teach this section. 10 centimeters over do minus f, that is 10 centimeters minus 15 centimeters. I get out of that 150 square centimeters over minus 5 centimeters. I'm going to get minus 30 centimeters. So check the qualitative. Is this, does this look farther away from the mirror than the object? Yeah, it does. Check. Looks farther away than the focal point. Check. Um, the negative tells you now that the image is on the opposite side of the mirror from the object. Remember, for a lens, that meant it was on the same side. But here's that reversal we see because a mirror reflects, a lens transmits. So the negative tells me that the image is on the opposite side of the mirror. Check. Good there. Let's check the magnification. I get minus di over do. Just go to minus di is minus 30. Keep track of those negative signs. Over 10 centimeters gets me a positive 3. The dimensionless, right? The, the units go away. All right. Positive tells me that it's upright. Check. 3 tells me it's bigger. Check. I feel good about this. Um, you may have seen these before. My mother, to this day, has one of these on her makeup counter where she sits to do her makeup. It's a magnifying mirror. Um, these are also used in solar ovens. Usually the, uh, the, the, uh, the food is farther away so that you focus down the, the, or the, you put the food at the focal point so the sunlight actually focuses on the food. Uh, these have a lot of practical applications. If the, if the object is closer to the mirror than the focal point, it turns into a magnifying mirror, just like you had a magnifying glass with the the lens case but so maybe you've seen these maybe not they do exist with lots of places in the real world so that is a converging mirror that's the two cases of the converging mirror right the case where the image sorry the object is uh, farther away from the mirror than the focal point and closer to the mirror than the focal point the third case do the same thing we did with lenses put the object at the focal point you still get nonsense here the same thing will happen if you have one of these mirrors and you put your face up close to it, you'll see yourself larger and upright. As you move the mirror away from your face to you stretch out your arm, there comes a point where it's just nonsense. You're passing to the focal point. And then after you get past that, the image is upright, sorry, is inverted. I said upright, is inverted and uh, it can get smaller or larger depending on where you are. Okay, so that's a converging mirror. We're going to do the diverging in this video too, two, two videos for the last one, but we're going to, I think we can, we can get through this. A diverging mirror will look like a converging lens. So you see these a lot in convenience stores used as security mirrors. You see these sometimes on uh, driver's side mirrors of, of trucks that pull trailers. So they give you a wide field of view. They give you a wide field of view because according in accordance with the law of reflection rays that come in parallel are going to diverge as they reflect so we call this diverging mirror i'm going to follow the exact same procedure i did with lenses though Let's trace these back. Let me get a different color because that's struggling with the ink. Let's trace these diverging rays back. And you can probably see already that I'm going to have virtual images formed. That's not so bad. Yeah. They're going to, if I trace these back, 
the virtual rays will converge at a point there. And I define that here as the focal length of this mirror. This is a diverging mirror, just like with diverging lenses. This will be given negatively. It could be negative 10, negative 15 centimeters, whatever. It will be a negative number. The focal distance is less than zero for all diverging cases, lenses and mirrors. All right, so let's see what's gonna happen here. I'm gonna put an object here, let me do a different color. Let me, oh, let me draw a different one so it's not so convoluted. Let me put an image here. Let the light come in. Oh, to point out. So here we have um, the, sorry, focal point back here. We're gonna look on my rules for ray tracing for diverging mirrors. And what I'm gonna find, we've already seen this case for the light that's coming in parallel. It will reflect as if it were emanating from the focal point. All right, let one come in towards the center. It's gonna reflect at the same angle. So 